Thanks everyone for joining us today. Candice and I are really delighted to speak with Ewan and Sophie from the Multiverse team. That Having already invested, it's clear that we believe in the opportunity to make finding great employment meritocratic. But through the course of this conversation, we're really excited to understand exactly how Multiverse is doing that. GV is also incredibly lucky to have Candice on our team. So Candice is our EDI partner and helps us improve, uh, our, improve our diversity and actually benefit from diversity, but also in support our portfolio companies to do the same. Now, one of the reasons that Candice is really effective in her role is her breadth of experience. And that experience actually includes working on apprenticeship programs while leading diversity initiatives at Pinterest. So in a moment, I'm going to turn it over to Candice, who is way more qualified than I am on the needs of employers and apprentices. And Candice will lead the discussion. But before we do, Candice, uh, the concept of apprenticeships isn't really as known in the US as it is in Europe. So can you share some thoughts about your experience of um, creating an apprenticeship program in the US? Yeah, it's actually been very interesting because as tech companies in particular have grown over the last 25 years, as we talk about startup tech companies, high growth tech companies, uh, a lot of the initial talent were folks that didn't necessarily have a four-year college degree or didn't come from, you know, a handful of computer science programs, but just built these really amazing companies. Uh, but some somewhere over that course of those couple of decades, they're starting to become kind of a little bit of a, a playbook, if you will, of these are the best universities, these are the best computer science programs, and it became essentially a requirement for tech talent. And when I was at Pinterest, uh, the team created a program that was designed to circumvent all that and kind of go back to how do we find people that are absolutely talented despite them having not having a four-year degree from a handful of programs because that was unnecessarily totally limiting the diversity of talent. Now employers are learning that absolutely these programs scale. This talent is actually bringing in a different set of skills and, uh, and that these are a great way of diversifying the talent pool. So Ewan, to start us off, could you tell us a little bit more about Multiverse and what you're actually building? Absolutely. So we're on a mission to create a diverse group of future leaders by building an outstanding alternative to university and to corporate training for apprenticeships. And it's our belief that university is broken as a one-size-fits-all model. Degrees have been used as this proxy for ability in the workplace, which they're not, and they're failing to level the playing field. So family income is a greater determinant than academic performance of career earnings and minority groups have been consistently underrepresented at elite institutions and then at the same time a shot of learning in early life is not going to see someone through multiple different careers over what could be 50 years of work and employers are struggling to find people with skills they need in data analytics software um, and sporadic corporate training just isn't sufficient to address this so we focus on three areas giving employers a way of measuring potential and suitability for roles that doesn't just rely on academic credentials or previous experience. We then are training people at any stage in their career through applied learning. So basically, how you teach people to problem solve by tackling real challenges in the workplace. And then finally, everyone on our programs get a gets access to this really great social experience. There are meetups, society, sports teams, networking and events. So the programs are never just about work and training. And our apprentices are working at some of the world's top companies, places like Google, of course, but also Facebook, Sky, WPP, Morgan Stanley, and many, many great startups. Sounds like the apprenticeship model is incredibly broadly applicable. Um, can you give us an idea of the types of roles that you're training for and you're on-ramping people into at the moment? Absolutely. I mean, we focus very much on tech and professional services, but these are things like business operations, project management, um, software engineering roles, data analytics roles, um, a whole range of things that basically are suitable for people both at the very start of their careers as they're making their way in companies, but also those looking to reskill. So we also run programs for mums returning to work, for example, or military veterans. It's basically any time someone wants to go and start either a career from scratch or a new career where they're reskilling. And we use the apprenticeship to give them the skills they need to be able to do that successfully and also in many cases help them find that opportunity. 
And you don't need to have a college degree. You don't need to have any sort of academic credential in order to go and pursue one of these opportunities. Sophie, I understand that you're leading U.S. initiatives for Multiverse and the company is announcing expanded U.S. presence. Can you talk a little bit about Multiverse's unique approach here? Absolutely. So when you when you think about the problems that Multiverse has set out to solve, a broken higher education system, a lack of equity in the workplace, and the fact that we continuously still hire for degrees rather than skills, yet the skills gap is continuously widening. When we looked at the states, this is only more acute and college is not delivering on its promise to prepare people for the future of work so we really were very excited to be able to apply what's worked so well for us in the uk hiring based on potential grit conscientiousness interpersonal skills alongside deep partnerships with community organizations so that we're really finding talent that our employer partners aren't able to reach and then a brand new approach to turn on its head how learning has traditionally taken place, focusing on working backwards from the role. How do you turn someone into a great software engineer? How do you turn someone into a great data analyst? And that's through this applied learning approach, learning, doing, iterating constantly on the job. And then where we see this really unique proposition for the US market is through our community because we are providing this experience that rivals that of the best universities. You get the same sort of speakers you'd expect on an Ivy League campus, access to professional mentors that might be C-suite at a large organization, but also ability to make friends, create your personal and professional network and ultimately accelerate your career. I love that, Sophie. I think that apprentices that come in often experience um, you know, potentially imposter syndrome, right? So having this group and community around them is very important. You and I want to ask you a little bit about your impact in the UK market. So as you're moving to the US, you've worked with 300 clients in the UK and thousands of apprentices. So what are some of the takeaways that you've had from the work Multiverse has done in the UK to date? There's look, there's been a lot to be to be proud of and excited by. I mean, we've had over 100,000 people applied to be apprentices with us, and we've been able to help support a much more diverse group of talent into many great companies. If you look at the apprentices we've placed, over half are people of color, 40% come from the areas of high social economic deprivation, about 57% are women. And it's really changed the way these companies have approached early talent hiring. And that in turn does a lot to change perceptions about what an apprenticeship is, what apprentices can do, whether or not you need a degree. And one of the great things is that over the last year in particular, we've seen this massive increase in direct engagement from CEOs and boards of these companies because they're turning to apprenticeships to address both the pressing need for digital transformation that's just become more acute through the global pandemic, but also they are desperate to better reflect the communities they serve with their workforces. And these are hugely important topical issues in the UK, but also massively so in the US. And it's been brilliant seeing um, public commitments from businesses and organizations and leaders of, of organizations in this area. And I think the results have been really positive. I mean, 87% of our apprentices stay long-term with their employer. About half are promoted um, or receive a pay increase within six months of starting their program. So we're really helping to make that change stick. That's excellent, you. And in my experience, apprentices had higher retention rates uh, than other technical employees. Mm. Absolutely right. Sophie, I want to ask you, as you expand into the U.S., one of the common wisdoms here is that the more advanced degrees you have, the better your economic security. Uh, why do you think this view has to change? Such a good question, Candice. And I, I think that at the heart of it, if we want to get real about building a workplace that reflects the society that we operate in, we need to get real about the fact that degrees only serve part of our population. So if we look at if we look at um we look at the US population, two thirds of black Americans are screened out of um of jobs just because they don't have a degree. That's almost 80% for Hispanic Americans. And when we when we actually think about what you actually what you actually get by doing a degree, a lot of the time when you think about the skills that we actually need for the future, data machine learning, software engineering, analytics. By the time you've spent three years out of the work, workforce getting a degree in those, your skills are gonna be obsolete and you're gonna to need to retrain anyway as you enter the workplace. So we're really looking to challenge that in a number of ways. One is how, we, how we're 
challenging that perception at an entry level talent, really demonstrating through the potential of our apprentices, what they're bringing to the table, the projects that they're working on, and really starting to have a direct impact at an organizational level. But then it's how do you then provide them that pathway to the boardroom? And if we see that there are only four black CEOs of the Fortune 500 company, we're not doing something right if we continue to think that advanced degrees are the metric for success. And so once they're in the workforce, how do you enable those pathways to the boardroom? And we see that through on the job training and the ability to continue to build your skills, not degrees. And that's really how you how you break through those barriers. Sophie, that is absolutely powerful. That's powerful, not just at the entry level, but scaling all the way up through their CEO and board leadership. Ewan, I want to turn to you. Um, you've talked about how there are multiple universes for young adults. What sparked the creation of multiverse? Can you talk a little bit about the yeah. problem that you set out to solve? Sure. And, and look, the, the multiverse theory is that there are potentially infinite number of alternative universes, and anything is possible because in one of those universes, it's already happening. And that's an empowering concept, particularly because people are too often persuaded to take one path to success, or they're too often just being defined by their background and not being given any real options. So we're trying to change that by ensuring there is a genuine, credible alternative route to the very best jobs, that kind of route to the boardroom, as, as you and Sophie were talking about earlier, that's accessible to a much broader range of people. And the thing that really led me to start Multiverse was trying to address this question of how do we make sure the best jobs of the next decade don't just go to the same people as the best jobs of the last decade? Because if societies can't address that pro um, properly, then we'll see much more of the social and political challenges and upheaval we've witnessed over the last few years, because you'll essentially have large numbers of people in society feeling like they have no stake in the future. And that's going to be a problem for all of us. Ewan, let me take it personal for a second. Let me ask you about your experiences in building Multiverse in the early days. What were some of the biggest lessons that you learned as an entrepreneur? <laughs> you definitely learn a lot. And um, it is... I think in the early stages, the, the most challenging thing was trying to persuade people, um, employees, customers, apprentices, and of course, parents and teachers as well, that this idea was something that could be successful and that they should want to be a part of it. And I, I spent a lot of time painting that picture and trying to bring the vision to life. And it's one of the reasons why whenever I'm asked to give advice to, to entrepreneurs, I always say, you have to be solving a problem that you're really excited about and you care about what you're building beyond just seeing it as a great business opportunity because otherwise it's going to feel a little soul destroying and it won't convey the right level of authenticity and that's so important especially in the early stages as you're kind of establishing that credibility and the other learning i think is just to be really explicit about your values um your personal values and, and then the company's values and ensure that everyone you bring in is aware of them because it is the single most important thing to reflect on when you're hiring people and when you're growing and, you know, you, you make a lot of great memories during these journeys. There are some really enduring ones there. I still remember taking the call from the manager of the first apprentice we ever placed that he was being promoted and, and just how happy he was. Um, the first time we brought all of our apprentices together for a graduation ceremony, moving into our first proper office, telling the team when we closed our seed round and, and kind of sharing that with them and celebrating. Those are some of the memories that, that, that really stick with you as you continue scaling and go through that. That's excellent. That doesn't sound a little bit soul destroying at all. That sounds lovely. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, and actually, I'd, 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 love to, I'd love to just add on that with sort of reflections on this for the States. Um, we do. We, we do anything with it. But um, I, I joined you in as a, as a founding team member back four or so years ago um, when, when Multiverse was at its inception. And as we, as, we look to the, as we look to the US and we're the challenges that we are coming up against, the bias towards, the bias towards degrees, the lack of awareness around what a ap professional apprenticeship can mean, actually, these are the same challenges that we faced when we, when we were starting off with Multiverse. Um, you know, Googles and Facebooks and the sales forces of this world were not taking on apprentices as a meaningful way of diversifying their entry and and existing workforce. And when we look to the States, 
this is where I see such a big opportunity because right now there is no one else that is thinking about how do you turn a current system on its head. And we've seen those objections. We've seen how we've brought brought people along with us. And we know that it's about creating this movement and we're starting to see what that, what that means in practice in the States as well. And I, I think on that point, it's, it's never just about tinkering around the edges of the existing mm -hmm. system, right? It's not, not enough to simply augment higher education or make college slightly cheaper or a little bit more accessible or faster to do. It's actually asking that question, what would you build instead if college didn't exist as a concept mm -hmm. that is fair, inclusive, gives people the skills they need and actually can demonstrate a clear ROI to the people pursuing that path? And, and that's really what we've been about since we started.